In this video, we will be looking at one tip to help you climb out of every rank in Valorant starting from Iron all the way to Immortal. Every rank in Valorant comes with its own trials and tribulations that players must overcome in order to climb. Whether you're at the bottom of the ladder just starting your rank climb, or you have just peaked in Immortal for the first time, there is always more you can learn. What's going on guys, it's your host Sergeant Frost here, and in this video we are bringing you one tip to help you climb out of every rank. We will be starting from Iron and working up all the way through Immortal, bringing you one thing that each rank needs in order to help you climb. One thing to note in this video is that each tip builds on the last, meaning our silver tip applies just as much when you reach plat, but it should be your focus to help you get into gold. Certain aspects of your game can carry you individually, but you can only get so far. An example of that is lacking good aim, but making up for that in great communication. With that skill set, you might be able to climb out of the plat ranks more easily, but doing the same in silver could be really hard for you, since silver players are way less likely to listen to your comms or play around them, but they are easy to defeat if your aim is good enough. So watch to the end so you can incorporate every tip and don't skip over any crucial aspects that could stunt your improvement. Make sure to comment down below what rank you're currently in and let's get into it. Kicking off our first tip for climbing, we of course need to start with the iron rank. Iron is the rank where you learn the basics. It's a rank a lot of players first start out with, but ultimately quickly climb out of as well. We find that a lot of iron players have either crazy high sensitivities or don't have a good grasp of the basic Valorant fundamentals. Climbing out of iron or even improving at the game can be almost impossible if your mouse sensitivity is too high, or if you have messed up settings across the board, or if you don't follow the basic game mechanics. Your sensitivity should be high enough that you are able to do a 180 degree turn in game with moving your mouse from the middle of your mouse pad to the other side, but also should be low enough to easily make small adjustments on targets far away. There is no general perfect sensitivity since everyone is different, but starting off with those benchmarks should help you begin to find a sense that works for you. Iron players trying to climb to bronze should really look to practice good fundamentals when taking gunfights. Make sure to avoid moving and shooting to help improve your accuracy and don't get into bad habits like scoping in every fight. If you find this to be a common problem, there is a setting located in Valorant that displays shooting and accuracy that you could consult to get an idea of your movement habits. Once these settings are in a good personal spot for you, maybe you should watch our Noob to Pro settings guide. Then learning every other aspect of the game becomes infinitely easier and you can start working on getting into bronze. Now that we are out of iron and are building consistency with our tune settings, this is where you really want to begin understanding the game of Valorant. Our tip for bronze players is to familiarize yourself with your main agents and the maps in the game. You want to begin getting comfortable with your agent's kit and don't want to be getting lost from map to map. Every agent in Valorant has a different set of utility, and the faster you familiarize yourself with your favorite agent's kit, the sooner you can make progress towards other aspects of the game. It can be extremely challenging to work on things like aim, communication, and movement when you are worrying about your utility the entire time. Pick an agent that you think will be fun to play and practice with them from game to game. We suggest you keep the agent you pick to be on the simpler side. Phoenix, Brimstone, Sage, Fade, and Killjoy are all great examples of agents that you can pick up relatively quickly. As far as the maps are concerned, we recommend adjusting your minimap settings so you can view the entire map at all times. This way, you can start connecting where you're standing to your portrait on the map, making the process of rotating and detecting possible enemy positions much easier. In case you didn't watch the Iron Tip, we have a video in our Noob to Pro series covering all these settings, including setting up your map. Knowing where the enemy team can be located at the start of rounds and which areas of the map are safe or contested is something you want to familiarize yourself with in order to help yourself on your journey to silver. Before we move on to silver, I quickly want to say that if you're serious about improving, you should check out our website as well. We have guides made by the best pros in the scene, we got boot camps that'll help you improve quickly in a short amount of time, and we even got coaching by immortal and radiant level players. And all that is available for just $8 a month. Going back to silver, this is where a lot of players have trouble climbing. The climb from silver to gold can feel almost impossible for a lot of players, since there's very much an aspect of increased competition. But we are here to tell you that it can be one of the easiest climbs in the game if you know what to focus on. Our tip for silver players is to work on mastering and perfecting your aim through consistency. Now, the tip of get better aim can be attributed to every single rank in Valorant, so you might be wondering, why is this so important in silver compared to everything else? It's not the idea of getting a better aim that's the tip, it's finding how to practice consistently. Silver is the point in Valorant where many players will know the basics of their characters, meaning ability usage is very common but not perfect. Players are way more or less likely to go for risky, low value plays and start expanding outside the idea of play with my team. You should be looking to take advantage of these common mistakes and the best way to do that is with good aim. Aim is the ultimate tool to take advantage of low elo players since it saves you in two different ways. If the enemy makes the completely correct play with their utility and has you dead to rights, they will still lose to you if you are able to out-aim them. Maybe you are tagged by a Sova drone and then Reyna flash the corner, but you are able to quickly take out the flash and take out Reyna regardless of your disadvantage. And on the other side of the coin, you can stuff everything up and completely botch a play, but some nice shots could end up saving your life and converting that round to a win. 
Learning good habits to train your aim not only will get you out of silver, but will continue to propel you through the higher ranks following. The best way to practice your aim and movement is to consistently play deathmatch before your rank games, just to work on your gunplay and to get in some warm-up. While aim trainers like Aim Labs allow you to focus on making you a mechanical god, they unfortunately won't help you out with your movement. Find a good balance of aim, movement, and gunplay practice. And if you can get yourself a consistent schedule doing up to one hour of practice each day, you'll quickly find yourself out of the silver ranks. But remember, practice doesn't stop if you get to gold. You started out in silver and continue doing it for the rest of your Valorant career. Gold and plat are the most common ranks to be referred to as the ELO hell of Valorant. Games can feel chaotic, uncontrollable, and sometimes feel like whatever you contribute to your team is just not enough to win. The first part of what I said is very true. Games are chaotic and there's a strong lack of coordination indeed, but the idea that you can't contribute enough to a win is far from the truth. The tip we want to leave with our gold players is to expand your agent understanding and learn how each agent wants to play. Starting from bronze, you have been learning how to master your own favorite agent. Whether you're an aggressive all-in jet main or a methodical patient killjoy main, you'll have solid understanding of how your agent wants to play. Jet wants to gather information about positions and force enemies away, making space for her team. While Killjoy wants enemies walking into her set piece traps to secure frags and to deny important areas of the map. Getting out of gold is all about understanding the basics of the four roles and knowing how each agent wants to play. If you're a jet player, you probably want to smoke dash into sites in most scenarios. But if you're up against a good cypher and do that, well, you'll get tripped and you'll get killed through one of his cages, even without a chance to fire back. When you're Killjoy and you play against a smart Sova, you'll probably notice that your utility on lane will get completely countered by a simple shock dart. Knowing what you're up against and recognizing how that should change your play is what you should be looking towards on your climb to plat. Of course, staying consistent with the aforementioned practice regimen. Platinum is the first rank that starts to scratch the surface of the higher elos of Valorant. I find this is where many players start to come into their own and begin to master their own personal playstyles they develop from gold. This is what leads me into our tip to bridge the gap from plat to diamond being, learning how to operate in a team environment and understanding how teams in Valorant want to play together. The idea of this is to know not only how you want to play, but how every other role in your team works together. Valorant is a team game after all, and learning how to help your teammates perform the best they possibly can is what team play is all about. The simplest way to develop and hone this skill is to focus on how to master your individual role. Each role has an obligation to work with one another in order to create the greatest possible advantage. Roles in Valorant were created for a reason, and each is tasked with their own job that they need to complete round to round for the best chance to win. If you want to learn the ins and outs of your role, I encourage you to check out our Finding Your Perfect Role video. In this video, we cover all the roles in great detail and what it takes to be successful in these categories. This knowledge will have a domino effect on all of your gameplay, allowing you to help your team and carry games where you can't rely on your team for help. But remember, if your teammates in solo queue aren't being cooperative, which sometimes does happen, don't lose your cool and tilt them into throwing the game. Learning how to clear angles with your Sova drone for your duelist is one thing, but an equally important part of team play is being a likable teammate that people are wanting to listen to. If teammates prefer to default or play for picks, that's fine too. Commanding them each and every round and crying when they don't want to help you won't make you climb the rank. Diamond is what I would consider the start of high elo in Valorant, specifically Diamond 3. This is where the player ratios start to taper off as you climb higher in elo, but the tip to get from Diamond to Ascendant directly relates to our tip from Plat. This tip is to learn how to maximize the value of utility from game to game. An excellent example of this concept in action is if you were to play an agent like Sova or Fade, a Diamond Sova might just send his dart back Sight Force team and hope for the best, while an Ascendant or Immortal Sova will first properly time his dart with his team's push, and next he'll have a lineup or two to ensure key areas of the bombsite are being revealed, as well as properly communicate any potential must-knows or weaknesses about the dart that they just shot. Checking these boxes keeps increasing how much value your utility is having and will increase your chances of your team winning the round. For other agents, this concept could look like combining abilities with your teammates like a raise, nade, and a face suck to pick up a few free frags. This builds on the idea of mastering your agent and develops your game sense. Since at the higher ranks, players are constantly maximizing their utility, you are actively learning how to avoid and counter the enemy team's attack. When you master this concept, you will finally be able to break through to the higher end of the Valorant ladder, Ascendant. Ascendant is the first taste of what it means to be in the upper echelon of the player base. If you're in the Ascendant rank, you have a good understanding of the basics of Valorant, and you have what it takes to climb to Immortal mechanically. This doesn't mean stop practicing and aim training, but what it does mean is that for many Ascendant players, it's less about their skill holding them back and more of their attitude. Our tip for Ascendants trying to make that Immortal push is to drop their ego. Having an ego isn't inherently a bad thing, but the problem with having an ego is that it stops you from learning from your mistakes and playing with your team correctly. When you think you're the best one in the lobby, you look to blame your team. Don't get me wrong, your teammates are going to make mistakes just as you will, but looking to make small changes to your gameplay to help avoid these deaths is what pushes you farther. 
For example, if you die from being shot in the side because your Reyna failed to hold an angle, your ego would tell you that it's not your fault because she should have been watching the angle. But to improve, you need to put that aside and also recognize that you weren't very aware of what angles were being held and maybe just made an assumption of what your Reyna would be doing without communicating or asking them to. Maybe you get the first two entry frags onto a bomb site, but then you overheat and die in the enemy spawn and your team loses the 4v3. Here you want to avoid the, well I got mine mentality, since the truth is that you also tossed your life, and you could have played the 5v3 a bit smarter. Looking for your own mistakes this way builds good habits that convert you into being a better solo queue player and teammate. If your ego has you thinking that your team is the only reason you're losing, you need to look at the players in the ranks above you. Did they all get extremely lucky to get out? Did players like Tens and Ye just have 2-3 to three good days of ranked in a row where their teams were good every single game? No, not at all. They know how to work in a team environment effectively and practice every day to have some of the best mechanics in the world. If they were in your place, you probably would have won, or at least gotten out of that rank in a couple days. Getting to Immortal is not about winning every game, it's about understanding your own shortcomings and working on those to become a better player. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll get out. Lastly, let's quickly go over the difference we believe divides Immortal from the top 500 Radiant players. I want to preface this part of the video by saying that the difference between Immortal 1 and 3 is a large skill gap, and Immortal 3 to Radiant is also quite the jump. But here we are talking about what it takes to climb through the Immortal ladder as a whole. The biggest tips we can give for Immortal players trying to make Radiant is to stay consistent in all aspects of the game and improve communication. In Immortal, you are playing with some of the best players in your region, so it's important to start to master all aspects of your game and never let up the grind. Valor isn't really a game you can take a few days or a week's break from and return to playing at your peak form. This is even more true the higher the rank you are. If you aren't playing and practicing every day, not only are you not going to climb, there's a chance you even go down a bit because of how competitive those top spots are. Look to set goals for how many games you can play a day, and make sure you're in a good headspace before you play them. Take care of any IRL stuff that needs to get done so you can commit your full focus to these games. In Immortal, anyone can beat anyone on any given day, so your mind is extremely important in these games. Players who keep themselves and those around them tilt-proof are the ones who see the most consistent success climbing the Immortal gauntlet. Just being a respectable teammate matters more here than anywhere, and good vibes go a very long way. To be extremely honest, having some good babysit skills here is a huge plus. It's not at all uncommon that these games are decided by whatever team tilts first. In general though, you never want to stop improving as a player. So keep tabs on all the tips we already went over and make sure you're striving to perfect all of these aspects, having goals for things you want to work on and spend your time efficiently slashing away at them. These are our tips to help you climb from rank to rank in Valorant. Remember, working on each of these skills individually will help you not only climb, but will prepare you for what it takes to master the next rank and take over your games. This has been your host Sergeant Frost and we will see you all again in the next one.